Hi guys, this is Gregor for Personas and welcome to the second part of Dragon Job Wizardry where we're looking at this core principle of Studio One where you drag something with your mouse onto something else and you get the expected result. Now this is not a complete list. I'm of course not able to go through all of the functions where this works right now but here's a couple of my favorites that you might not know yet. Enjoy. One of my favorite drag and drop moves has got to be the event effects. For example, on drum loops. The intent that I have here is to apply different insert effects, but only on these two particular snare drums, not on the entire loop. And usually I have to revert to automation to do this. And especially if I want to have different effects on each of these, it easily becomes a little bit messy. So this is why event effects are so fantastic. I simply go to the effects browser and then I select any insert effect of my choice, open air reverb for the first snare for instance, and then I'm gonna drag that from the browser as we usually would, but then I'm gonna hold down alt on Windows PC or option on a Mac before I let go. And now only this particular snare drum has a reverb on it and all the others don't. You can see which event effects are currently applied on this particular event on the track inspector. You can also see it here on this little event effects icon. For the second snare, let's just go for a groove delay to uh, have a bit of a contrast. Once again, just hold down option on a Mac or alt on the Windows PC before you let go. Easy as that. Another really powerful thing you can do with drag and drop is to extract and apply the groove of one element in your song on others. You can also use this for instant sample replacement techniques or you can use it to quickly add a rhythmic rim shot to a vocal that's exactly in time with the original performance. Let me show you. So here I have a rap vocal and a drum loop and I'd like to add a rim shot to this that I've prepared on track one here on my Impact XT. And I want to have that play at the exact same point in time as this vocal. Here's the instructions, put it together. It's simple, ain't it? But it's quite clever. So essentially, I'm looking for a percussion that's playing exactly in time with the vocal to give this a bit more life. To do this, I'm going to click here to open up the audio bend menu and hit analyze after I've selected the vocal. Now I can set the threshold for the bend marker detection at the transients of this vocal, essentially at the points in time where there's something of rhythmic significance going on. And after I've done so, I can simply drag and drop from here onto my prepared impact track. Now all that's left to do is transpose these drum hits that have been extracted from the vocal onto the pitch where I've added my percussion. And in my case, that would be A1. So simply select, right click, go to musical functions and transpose, and then set everything to A1. And after I've done that, I get a rim shot that's exactly on time with the vocal. Here's the instructions, put it together. It's simple, ain't it? But it's quite clever. You can of course use this in any way you like. This is just an example. Please also note that this works not just with audio, but also with MIDI guides. So you could also extract the quantization, the note length, the velocities of a MIDI event, for instance, and apply that onto other instruments or audio files. And if you want to learn more about that, I'm going to link you my video that's dedicated to Groove Maps here in the info box. And this actually leads me straight up to my next drag and drop example. What if we want to take this rim shot now and add it to our own loop library for further reference, but upon recall, we want to make sure that it also recalls the Impact XT so we can make changes to the sound uh, without losing any quality. And it should also recall all the insert effects, all the multiple outputs that we might have used. Let's look at that. So to do that, all you need to do is right click the event, give it the name that you want so you find it back later. Maybe let's call that uh, vocal groove rim shot, just for this example. And then you go to the files tab if you're not there already in your Studio One browser. Then you just navigate to any directory, your sample library or anywhere where you'd like to store this loop and uh, make sure that you can also find it back later. And then just drag and drop it and that's all you need to do. Now, you can see that this vocal groove rim shot has been added to my library right here. I can pre-audition it. 
I could even uh, listen back to it in a different song tempo. And if I decide that I really like it, perhaps in a completely different song, I'm just opening up a new song uh, to make my point here, I just drag that in and you'll notice that it's not recalling an audio loop, but it's recalling the entire Impact XT instance together with the used beat delay and everything else. So this is really a fantastic workflow, I gotta say. And it works not just with native Studio One plugins and instruments, but with any kind of VST, 2, 3 or AU plugins. So you could also do this with any other synthesizers and build your truly own completely recallable loop libraries this way. I would also encourage you to add your song directory, your entire song directory here to the files browser. To do this, just navigate to it over the files directory, then right click and use new tab from here. Make sure to also save your song to make this change to the browser global. And once you've done so, you could really navigate to any of the songs that you've done in the past and then see all of the tracks, the performances and everything else, the presets you used on this particular song and just drag and drop that into the song you're currently working on. This is absolutely mind blowing that you can do this. And I'm gonna link my episode of Studio One with Gregor where I'm going over the drag and drop functionalities of the browser extensively here in this info box. So go check it out if you haven't already. If you're a Personosphere member, you also have access to some amazing drag and drop functionalities through Workspaces. Workspaces allow you to collaborate with anybody inside or outside of Personosphere. And um, yeah, this is embedded directly here into the Clouds tab of the Studio One browser. To demonstrate this, let me just open up a completely new song here and go to the Clouds tab of Studio One's browser. And here inside of the workspaces, these are all of the workspaces that I'm hosting, whereas collaborations are all the workspaces that I've been invited to by others. I can just directly access any of these and import an audio file. I can pre-audition it before I download it. As you can see, I can even listen to it in the current song tempo that I have set, which was different to this uh, beat. And if I like it, I can just drag and drop that over and it's getting downloaded immediately from Personosphere here into my song. It's genius. If I want to add a couple of comments for collaborators, by the way, I could simply click here on the file. It takes me straight to the Personosphere website and there I can just make my comments. Uh, I can even embed them at very specific points in time as I've already done right here. And it's just a very, very powerful workflow when you're remixing with others or collaborating in any other way. Also, this works in a bi-directional fashion. So if I've made a couple of changes to that and now want to bring it back to the workspace, it's just as easy. Just do the reverse thing, drag from here into Studio One's browser and the upload will start right away. Another place in Studio One that truly embraces the drag and drop philosophy is the show page. You can build the entire show page with drag and drop pretty much. Not only is it possible, for instance, to drag and drop the backing tracks or all of the instruments that you want to perform live into the show page, you can also decide on a section by section basis which amp, which vocal chain or which synthesizer you want to play on a per section basis in that song and all of that is drag and drop. So to just give you a glimpse of how powerful this is, if I want to play a specific impact kit here in the intro of this song, I can simply make my selection here and drag that in. And now I would already have an impact XT kit ready to play in this song section. Now, if I want to play a different synth, maybe not a drum sampler altogether, but a bass synthesizer instead, on the next section, just drag and drop it onto the next song section instead. And the instrument that you're playing is going to seamlessly switch to this other sound as the playhead cursor is reaching this position in the show. Right? Both of these sounds I just triggered from the same keyboard, but the first section was automatically playing the drums and the second one, it was automatically playing the bass. This also works great for guitarists, for instance. Let's say that you're performing Empire live, then simply go to Empire, make your selection of uh, the amp that you wanna play. Just go for your preset. Maybe I have a couple of lead presets here uh, prepared and then just drag that into your song to add it. This could be uh, the amp that you're starting out with. And let's say that you wanna switch to a completely different amp here in the first verse. 
then let's just go for a different amp and drag that in and then go for something more metal here in the dry section. And now if I show you this here in the mixer, you can see that I'm switching amp models and cabinets as I'm jumping around here in my song. And it's gonna switch seamlessly. It works the same way with vocal chains and so forth. It's truly powerful stuff. And in case you're interested in the show page, then definitely also check out this video here where I'm going over more of the powerful drag and drop functionalities found on the show page. Now, this was just a selection of my favorite drag and drop techniques. There are so many more. Please let me know your favorite drag and drop features that we should cover in a future video in the comments. We love to read your comments. Uh, please keep them up and see you next time.